Hi, Rich Colvin here again. I want to talk to you about some new add-ons we have for the MDF Rose Engine Lathe 2.0. And the first one of those is this curvilinear slide that you can see. We tried to use off-the-shelf parts as much as possible, things like the linear drive here and uh, the screw mechanism that's used for setting the depth of cut. The other pieces are easily machined in most shops. Uh, I used, uh, I have a band saw blade that I can cut aluminum with and the rest are made on the drill press. So uh, it's quite easy to make and we have all the directions published already on the MDF Rose Engine li Library. And so just quickly to show you what this is, it allows you to use this mechanism uh, with the screw to move your cutter along this linear axis which it's set right now for the Z axis but this could be turned at any angle so it could be the X it could be anything in the middle you could you could set it to run at an angle if you wish um, and the other is that it can follow these templates and uh, there's a template here already attached to the machine and what I'm going to show you now is what happens when we move to the right one inch and so you can see that it's moving to the right but it's also moving along this template into the cutting of the object. So this design here is setting the path that's being followed on the x-axis. So these are attached you know, to this T-track here and they are just held down with these two thumb screws here and here. These templates are eighth inch, in this case, um, plastic that we 3D printed and so we've got a number of these already set uh, and out there is a design that you can just 3D print yourself and uh, you can 3D print anything else you want. Or you could just use, like we do in some cases, things like this where it's um, a piece of, this is hardboard or um, uh, high density fiberboard and the design that I wanted to cut is here so I've just got the two screws to hold it in place and this is just really smooth so that as it goes around this curve that cut becomes cut into the piece of wood and some examples of why I wanted to do that let me turn the camera here so the first one is I wanted to make a watch case uh, for my sons and I tried this and you know it was okay but you know I just thought it was a little bland and by the way this follows on the other side the design that was established by Dick Singh and uh, so um, you can uh, easily create that but this side I found to be a little bland so tried a little bit more and you know it's a little bit better not great in my mind then I tried cutting around the edge almost like it were reeded on a coin but this edge design here is you, know, you can see it's got these little convexes where the cut of the cutter cut in there and again I wasn't happy with that what I wanted was something more like this where it cut around this curve here as a con vex curve rather than a concave curve and this is a piece of maple I have a piece here of um, ironwood that I did the same thing with and what resulted was this is my first attempt and it uh, has a nice I think you can see yeah, a nice curve here that's a nice convex curve continuous curve um, and then I was able to cut a design into the end of it and it looked okay, um, though I, I didn't like that one tremendously. And what I ended up with was this, where I have the curve, as you can see here along the side. And then I was able to use the Lotus 8 on the back and, and come up with a nice design. Uh, and then attach one of these uh, circular, I, I think they're called a lifting bolt. Um, they're kind of hard to find, so I'll put a link to where I got them in the show notes because I had to get these from Alibaba um, and, and wait a while to get them. But at the end of the day my sons were happy and uh, I was able to achieve the design I wanted and I made some other pieces using this same device. 
The other thing that's nice about this, and let me come back over here, is that by having this linear capabilities, it opens up some other features in the 3.0 software. And one of those is the sync page, because now I can synchronize the movement along this axis of a cut with the spindle turning. Um, I can do the reciprocation, and I'm going to do another video on that to talk about what uh, is able to be done there. And then the multi-sync is, is certainly a nice option where you can take a rosette and have its design spiral, you know, spiraling down the uh, cylinder as it's making the cut. And indeed, you can you can use a template at the same time so that you can have that design turning as it goes down at the same time maybe flaring out um, so that uh, I was able to make one piece which is a finial and the top almost looks like a woman wearing a, a long dress and, and spinning around in a circle where the bottom of her dress hasn't quite caught up to her waist and it, it's just really a beautiful design and my wife really loves it so and you know she's for me the ultimate judge so uh, again this is out there on the MDF Rose Engine Library Look on the second shelf, there are a series of three books for jigs and add-ons. And this is in volume two. And volume three is the, cur the curvilinear slide, which I'm going to show next. So give me a second to set up for that. The second new feature is a spherical slide. And what we did here was we took the bottom that had been on the cross slide and changed it out for this one. This piece still has the two mag switches here and here that you would use to lock it in place but when we're using it as a spherical slide we would add this piece in which is the pivot point that it rotates around and then it has two mag switches that it uses to hold it down and then the other two aren't used so what that allows you then to do is it allows this to be rotated around that point and the way that rotation happens is with this motor and the plastic piece here motor is locked in place with its own mag switches and then you can use any of these three holes here and you can move it around so I'll show you what that looks like you can see it rotating around this point here certainly you wouldn't be using it this fast when you're doing it but it's nice to be able to show in real time what it can do so you can position it very quickly so this would use on the four axis uh, older boxes this would be the Bravo axis that would be driving your motor here on the new five axis boxes or if you're on version 3 this would be uh, M3 or M4 I, I use M4 because I dedicate M3 to using it for the phaser multiplier so it's um, a very simple design um, and it's it's very easy to make because you really only have to make this additional MDF piece here and then the design for this uh, rotation point here and then this MDF block uh, and, and this is a, a standard off-the-shelf parts and even the plastic piece here that's used for pushing and pulling is uh, standard off-the-shelf too and you can see it's not machinist you know grade but once you get started you get past that backlash and then you do get a nice steady movement that uh, is continuously moving around and will give you a nice cut. Okay, so those are the two big uh, changes we have uh, we wanted to announce for you. Uh, why not change additions? And I hope you will go out to the MDF Rose Engine Library, find those directions. They're the red books on the second shelf, jigs, fixtures, and add ons. Um, the, as I said, the curvilinear slide is in volume two. The spherical slide is in volume three, and I had to break it up just because those PDF files were getting so large that uh, it was difficult to upload them from out where I live, where the internet's frankly rather slow. And then you can uh, print those off, make one yourself, and if you run into any issues, give me a ring.